All right, click on got it. Let me know you guys got the recording notification that this session is being recorded. This is for the weekly top-down analysis for the week of the January 8th, 11th. This is the, uh, it's technically the third week of June, but a second full week of June, to be honest with you, is like midweek, right? So before we get into, well, yeah, we're, this is pretty much the beginning of the summer months, okay? So this is going to kick off the summer months, right? This is going to be the hot week of trading, right? Why? Um, because there's some good things happening this week, right? It's going to be a hot week. How do you know it's going to be a hot week? Let's go through it, starting with today, Monday. Okay, so we got the 10-year bond. NBA Business Confidence, in, in, in AB, not NBA, sorry, in AB Business Confidence for us. Okay, well, okay, I'll tell you what. Aside from Monday, it's going to be a hot week. Everyone's clear on that? There's nothing really going on today. That's why we're doing a top-down analysis. Really, Monday doesn't really happen, right? There's only a few things that's happened, and if pairs move, it moves to this ADR. So it's not like something we're going to miss, okay? So let's move on to Tuesday. This is when the hotness happened. <laughs> All right. So starting with the uh, London session right here from 2 to about 5, 6 a.m. Um, we got a couple of um, pounds. I will expect this will move the pounds. Not a lot, but it's going to move it. US, USD, probably a couple of things that's going to move London session. We should have already been already aware of it, right? Manipulation, things like that. Well, the big one is happening right here. Anything with the red folder, right? Let's pay attention to the red folder. That's hot. We have CPI. CPI is the inflation rate number for USD. That's going to be hot. That's going to move. When when is going to move? At 8.30. We will be ready for it, right? We will. We will look for it today, <laughs> right? We're going to see what's going on, and we're going to try to trade the CPI news. Right, we gotta be anticipating it. Right, it's gonna make a break. It's not, we'll make a break that pair. That is also going to move gold. Right, All right. So these two is gonna move that, and it's gonna move indices, index. Um, we will start to trade index and try to make calls. Uh, this week may be highly volatile for some trade calls for indices, but um, we will be doing some indices trade. I want to start to focus more on indices now. Uh, this is our second week of the live trade room session for New York session that we're trading 20 hours a week, right? Four hours a day, 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern New York time, okay? Whatever the local time that is, I think that's a lot of hours to spend with you, right? That's almost 40 hours a week. Well, well half of it. Well, anyway, <laughs> Tuesday is going to be hot, okay? CPI, that's when we're going to start to move the dollar and gold, okay? It's going to be a very, very hot for the market. All right. And then we'll finish off with London session with NCD. Um, that's not even a red photo, so don't expect nothing big out of that. Okay, moving on to Wednesday, this week. This is fundamental news. This is what's going to cause the market to move. Let's start with London session. What's happening in London session? London's going to report their GDP. That is going to add another bump to pound. Right, so far two days, a little bump to pound, a little economic data to pound. So pound pound's going to be moving. Okay, um, that's it for London session. I don't see anything else that's going to be big. And then, bing, 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 we got some more red photo news. Let's just talk about it. PPI. Don't expect a lot of things out of PPI at eight thirty. Not today. Why? Because of this big one right here. This is a bigger news, right? This is the granddaddy, right? This is the big brother news. This is little brother news. That means if little brother's screaming, uh, this might cause a little issue, but when big brother's screaming right here, okay, the, the whole room is moving, all right? This is the FOMC rate decision. This will be at 2 p.m. This will be the day um, we should be out of our trade by London, okay? Um, at 8.30, we will look to see if there's a trade opportunity, for 8.30, but we may not take that position because anything we take here could be completely reversed at two o'clock. I wanted a chat that makes total sense what I'm just talking about. So this may not be a great day to trade 
USD cross. So we'll take a look at other pairs like JPY, right? Odd. USG, Euro pound. I mean, we may take a look at, you know, pound cat, pound, pound NCD, pound odd. We're just going to avoid dollar crosses opportunities this day, okay? Because it's going to move the market. Right. And then around London session, we got the employment chain for Australia. This will add more fuel for Australian dollar that will continue to move the market. And right now, Australia has been pretty strong compared relative to NCD to its recent news. OK, that's Wednesday. That's the big news. And we got some one central bank rate decision out the way. Yep, we got two more. This is Thursday right here. Thursday. What's going to happen? London session. Um, not much, not on Thursday, right? Everything that happened on basically on Tuesday is going to probably carry over, right? It's just going to continue to run. Now, for Thursday, we have this news right here around 8.15. This is now well into New York session. About right there. We have the euro. Bank rate decision, euro, this is going to be hot. This will either strengthen or weaken the market. We'll see what happens. They look like they want to raise interest rate to 3.75, uh, 0.25 basis point. This may move the market, right, um, in terms of for euro, anything euro. This may move uh, euro USD is what I'm trying to really signify because you, you the dollar just had its bank increase uh yesterday the day prior on wednesday this one may be moved to market but either way it's going to move all the other euro crosses so we need to be aware of at 8 15 that um we may not want to be in a trade yet and wait till 8 15 so around between five and seven we're just going to watch we're not going to really touch anything between 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. because we got this coming at 8.15. You don't want to be in the middle of a trade at 7 o'clock that looks like it's going to be a setup on your USD and have something go completely against you in the moments of a matter of a minute because you wasn't paying attention of something that's going to be manipulated to move the market at 8.15 a.m. So that means between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m., we're just going to watch. We're going to watch and trade other pairs, right? Oil, gold, everything else. But we're going to watch and wait on your USD. Okay? Makes sense so far? Good. All right. So that is the central second central bank rate decision. And then we're going to have another major news release, and that would be at this one right here. This may cause a pullback and may cause a continuation. Continuation meaning like fuel, gasoline to a fire that's already burning. And we have employment data, unemployment data. We got retail sales, right? Just other just other stuff, right? And that's Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I told you, so they're going to be hot. We already got two central bank rate decisions out the way. We got one more. Here it is. Bing, bing, bing. This is the big one. This is going to be around 11 p.m. Eastern time right now is what I have. Eastern time. So I will be up trading this. If it's London's time, you may not want to be up. If, if you can, 11 a.m. is really pretty darn late for you guys. You may want to go to sleep and then wake up for this one, right? So this is going to move the market. And we'll talk about this as we lead into Japanese yen day, because this is going to be leading up for any Japanese yen. So I am not going to take any new positions on new JPY pairs. I will take position on what we're currently doing in right now. I'm currently in Chef JPY and I'm currently in Pound JPY, those two pairs, right? So I would continue to manage and take position on those two pairs, but I won't be taking any new positions on any new pairs until after this day, right? Because this is a big one, right? There's no, it makes no sense for me to get in any new pairs trade if I know something's going to happen big on this particular day, right? With this being said, uh, we got a possibility with 0.10, um, it most likely may not raise interest rate again at negative 0.10. This would be good or bad. We really don't know because um, typically it will be bad. So we are going to lean on typical until we see it on the chart. So we can expect possibly JPY will go weak. We'll take a look at the chart, what that look like if it goes weak. However, we may get positive reaction 
a reaction. I don't know. I don't know why. It could be because of other economic Japanese Zen pair. It could be something in between. It could be a little bit of manipulation. It could be Japanese intervention. It could be all kinds of stuff. Who cares? All we need to do is wait for the freaking chart to see and know that on Thursday around 11 p.m. Eastern time, this pair is going to move and we got to be ready for it. That's all. You better have a game plan. That's all. And we will. Okay. And then we're going to wrap up Friday with uh, preliminary consumer sentiment, believing this is nothing, just nothing but trap day. You should have already been in the trade. If anything, the best thing to trade probably is com completely finish out whatever trade you're in, whatever trade we get in, we want to get out. Um, like USD on Friday, we did get trapped. Um, so that caused us to hold the trade over the weekend. Like today, um, we got trapped, right? Um, we could have got out of that trade because when that market didn't move up and continue to go up on EURUSD, hindsight 2020, we should have actually got out of that trade because it was not moving as, as it should. So in other words, when we got into the buy trade on Friday for EURUSD, we were buying it and we wanted to go up. Well, the market did go up, but it went like this. And it ended up closing here, right? When this happened, and we have to look to your left, and we saw that we had a liquidity level, and it looked like it didn't break. It should have broke. When it moves, it moves. And when it starts to come back, that's when we should have said, uh, let me put a protective stop loss because I'm not happy with that. It should have moved, and it's not moving. It doesn't need to come back. It did already come back. That's how we got into the freaking trade the first time, right? We got we got in on a pullback. What the hell are you coming back for, right? So if it comes back, we went out. Because if it comes back and we got in on a pullback, what are you pulling back for again? Unless it wants to do what? Unless it wants to break through. Did it break through on Friday? It did, huh? It went back on us. We should have got out on, on Friday that day saying that, hey, um, something's not right, or we should have closed the trade once things were not starting to look good in our way. So we had to hold this Euro USD till today. And that's the one with that we just went over to say, okay, prices move back up. Now go ahead and put your stop loss, right? So we want to go ahead and close that trade and get out of it right now. And who cares, right? We don't know if it's going to keep going. If the dollar is going to break through, we're going to take a look at the 80 20 probability, right? Okay. So that's why. We want to be careful when we trade on the uh, Friday, all right? Everyone good on fundamental calendar? Everyone makes sense? This is our leading indicator of what's going on for next week. A lot of things. Make sure you put a note on it because there's a lot of things going on on each day. This is your calendar for the week, each day of what's going on. This is what you're knowing, what the hell is going on today. You don't wake up and go, um, all right, what's moving today? Let me get my cup of coffee. What do I focus on? And what I think is moving, what I don't. Let me start with my favorite pair. That bull crap. Professional traders and experienced traders don't trade like that. We know exactly what we're doing. We know exactly what today is. We know exactly what we need to look for. And we have a plan just in case it goes and does something else. Okay? It's very simple. That's elementary. You got to sort of already have that. Okay. All right, so with that being said, um, a couple of things. Have we look into the calendar, starting with the Wednesday FOMC rate decision. You can see right here, it's already saying that it's a 5.25% currently. That's our interest rate. And we're looking to, that means just nothing, right? It doesn't change. Oh, okay. So that means we're expecting a no change of interest rates. A no change of interest rate, what's the probability of happening? Do you know that? Well, with the dollar, we do. We do have an indication in that it's a CME watch tool, right? You guys have that, the CME group watch tool. Let me refresh my screen and bring up the data. And right now we're looking at a 75% probability, bing, 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 that it will most likely not happen. <laughs> Meaning it will most likely not be an interest rate increase from 5.25 to 5.50, right? There's a 75% probability we will stay the same at 5.25% interest rate. It says 525, but it's 5.25. That's what it is. Okay. 525 points. I don't know, but 5.25%. That's how it's written. It, no, it says 5.25, but it's 
You guys get what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, so it's 75% probability we will not raise interest rate. If we do get an interest rate, it will be what? What is it called? This will move the market. Okay, this will move the market. If this thing raises 0.25 interest rate, it will be a shock to the market. Okay, now... No interest rate is not good for their currency. No one likes the currency to have no interest rate. I'm not making an investment on my money. I want higher interest rate. Come on, folks, what's wrong with you, right? If there's no interest rate, that means the dollar typically, remember what I said, typically, no interest rate means what? Boom, weak, and weak reaction to the dollar. Will we get that? I have no clue how the market is going to freaking react. If I knew, I'd be a billionaire by now, don't you think? So don't ask. I don't know. You don't know. The only one that knows is the market maker. She's going to move the market. Who already saying, hey, I know exactly what I'm going to freaking do. I don't know any of them personally that can tell me. Right? So it's not like I can call Rick and say, hey, Rick, what's what you guys going to do with the dollar, man? Hey, John, hey, what you, what you going to do with the dollar, man, this, uh, this Wednesday, man? Huh? Hell, you guys have one, let me know, okay? Until then, we're, we're going to have to see and trade what's on the chart. As of right now, we can only go with fundamental reasons and fundamental sound reaction that a weaker, no interest rate means it's going to be a weaker dollar. We're going to see that. So right now, we have to kind of go based on what we think is going to happen. So we have to play it out as if we typically could see a weaker dollar, but we also have to play it out just in case we see a typical stronger dollar, which way it's going to go. We have to see it either way because if the market goes either way, we got to be able to trade for it. Okay. So we'll see what it looks like on the chart and typically what we should be able to see and see if it's, see if the chart technically plays out fundamentally. Okay. So this is what we typically see, um, and we, we most likely will get a a pause in the interest rate, but that doesn't mean we will get a pause in July, right? And it's going to all come down to the FOMC minutes meeting afterwards or the press conference, not the minutes, the press conference that comes after the meeting and see what he says. He said, we're going to take an interest rate pause and who knows, we're going to uh, observe, observe the data and see how things are going. And then our next meeting, which is the next month, right, July 26, and we're going to see if we're going to raise interest rate. And right now, it's already saying there's a 53% probability. Man, that's a little bit slightly greater than 50% that we may raise interest rate, 5.25%. And there is a current probability of 32.6%. We remain the same. And there even is a small chance that we actually may go up 0.50% probability at the next July meeting, right? So if the interest rate for the dollar goes up to 0.5, this is going to be crazy, right? But right now, we're already showing that the 53% probability to go up. Okay, wait, hold on. We had a pause in July. We're going to go up in June. Yep, this is called a hop. When you have a pause in interest rate, and then next month you raise interest rate, it's called a hop. All right, so we'll see. This all this numbers right here is could change tomorrow. I mean, on Wednesday. So when this news release gets changed, we're going to come back and we'll take a look and we'll see how these numbers got shuffled. And we're going to know that right after the press conference. We're going to know how these probability happens. Okay, we'll see it real time. All right, any questions on the on the dollar? Okay, so let's look at the Japanese. Um, on Thursday, this is going to be a major one for us. That's the reason why I'm looking at um, Japanese yen. On Thursday, June 15th, we have the euro interest rate, right? And we know they're going to raise interest rate. So that's great. So they're going to go um, to... It's currently, it was previous, they're going to go to 4%, right? That's forecast, up 0.25%. And let's go to the Japanese yen. The Japanese yen is at already negative interest rate. And 
they're expected to not make any interest rate decision change, period. And right now it's showing like a flat line. So let's take a look at that flat line. So what does that flat line mean? That means historically they haven't raised interest rate. Let me see, in the last year, hold on, for the last five years, Oh, okay, hold on. Last 10 years? Okay, finally. What? We've been at a negative interest rate since 2016? Seven years? So for seven years, the Japanese yen has been on a negative interest rate change. But we didn't experience seven years of weakness right, which been going up and down, up and down on Japanese yen for the last couple of years, it's been like this in terms of Japanese yen cross, right, meaning the Japanese yen index has actually been going down, but everything else like pound JPY, had JPY, things like that been pushing up. So what is going on, right? So for seven years, Japanese yen have not raised interest rate. And they've been, economy's been up and down, up and down. The last time they have raised interest rate, oh, I don't know, they reduced interest rate. That's what they did here in 2016. They were already at 0%, and then they went down to a negative. There was like no interest rate, like negative interest rate. So when the last time they raised interest rate? Let's go 25 years? Ah, here we go. We see a bump. It was at 0% here in 2000. This looks like around, what's this? You want to call this 06, 07? 05? 06? So look like 07. And it basically went up here. And then it went up again. They look like they did a double interest rate. And it was around maybe 0.5%. And then it went down. They reduced interest rate back in 09, 10. And then they had no interest rate. Yep, so this is definitely monetary easing, right? To your point, Kevin, just is monetary easing, and they're just printing money. That's all. Just, just, just printing money. And this is just central banks gimmicks. Obviously, they don't no interest rates, so they have to just they're just pumping money into the economy. That's what they're doing. Um, when they raise interest rate, it's it's become tightening. But right now, they haven't raised interest rate, and yep, you guess it. The most likely will not raise interest rate tomorrow. So we're going to be ready for that. So it's most likely going to be a negative reaction. And therefore, we're going to be ready for it on Thursday. Okay. Any questions on Japanese yang? If not, let's go ahead and go right to the charts. Starting with the US dollar. Let me take a sip of my coffee. Hold on. Okay. So right now, we're looking at the dollar. This is the dollar currency. This is on the daily time frame. Each one of these candlesticks represents a day. Okay. And what you're seeing is all the way back from um, February 20, 2022. This is what the dollar has been doing since February 2022 on this chart. Okay. Let's go to the weekly. That means each one of these candlesticks represent a week. And right now it doesn't look like it's giving me a lot. So let me just switch data. Which in data mean I want to switch to get more feed. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and go here. I think I get more feed on this one. Go to the daily, go to the weekly. Oh, there you go, I got more data. This is back in 2015. Damn, that's a long time ago. What do you guys think? It's almost like, what, 11 years ago? So 11 years of data on here. So you guys can see where the dollar was strong. We got weak here in 2018, we went up. Right here, we had the COVID situation where the dollar was up and the dollar price went down in terms of value. And then we were on a bull run up here. Let me go ahead and go to the daily. We did come down to equilibrium, right? Right here, came down, came down 
and we're hovering around here right now, right? So what is going on with the dollar? Let's move on. So look at real quick, so you guys can see what we have. We had the peak that was swinging up here. That's a swing high, swing low, swing high. These are swing low, swing high points. You guys see them? Let's up that right there. Uh, yep, that's, a, that's the lowest point, okay? So this is the dollar. Came back, came up, came up, came down, came up. And that's where we're currently at right now. So a couple things right here are looking at the dollar. We got some premium imbalances up here. You guys should make sure you have this on your chart, right? We got a couple of premium imbalance here. That means the dollar could come up and mitigate and may not. It should, but sometime in the future, we'll see. Right now, we have a volume imbalance sitting right there. Ironically, it's sitting right at a liquidity point. So that's a volume imbalance. We got another volume imbalance right here. We got another volume imbalance. I'm going to put a VIMB. We got one here. We got one here. We got one here. You guys already know from the lesson, this is a very, very high value targets that price will come back and want to capture, want to come up and mitigate it. Okay. You want to come up. It's going to want to come up and take that. I want to come up and take that out. want to come up and take any of these out. Okay. So that's one thing we know so far that's there on the chart. And right now the dollar is currently looking at this fractal. Look at what we're looking at. You got to see it. Well, right smack where? At the top or the bottom of this range and this little range here? We're neither. We're sitting right smack in the middle, are we not? We're sitting right there in the smack in the middle, okay? So we're at a key decision rate, decision right now. And we'll zoom in so you can take a look and see exactly what I'm talking about. So if the dollar breaks, we're going down. This is what going down looks like. This is the area where it needs to break. It needs to break this low, this liquidity low. If the dollar breaks that, I guarantee you guys, we are done for the year. Dollar is going down. DSY is dead for 2023, for the rest of the year. The dollar will be going lower and lower and lower, right? Not a bad thing, it's just saying that the dollar is just weak and therefore inverse correlated, that means the indices, stock market, equity market should be going up. Economy is recovering, everything's going up, everything's kumbaya, and we're going into a more of a deflationary um, era and we'll be in a recovery market from the bear market. Right now, we don't know until we get that break. Right. That's going to be key. It needs to break that area of the low. Okay. Very, very important. However, if the dollar breaks this high, right here, dollar breaks that high, then that means the equity market could be looking at a damn recession. Huh? Exactly. Right. We could be going in back down. The equity market could be going down and the dollar be going up. So the Fed just kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place right now. Right. We don't know how the market is going to react with the Fed pause and the hop. Right. We don't know how the, the market is going to react with the pause this Wednesday that we're expecting no interest rate knowing that there's an interest rate coming, right? So we don't know what that means, how the market's going to react. And if he did, we would be billionaires, right? We'll, we'll be able to put a million dollars or, or all of our money on the physicians and sold it. But we don't know, right? The market is right now, it's in a, black, in, in a flag position right now. This looks like a bull flag pattern. I don't trade bull flags, so let's get this, don't, 
don't look at it that way. You could, because it's easy to see it, because then you're saying that this can be going up. It could, but don't let that be because of the pattern. No, just the pattern is just one thing to be able to recognize so that you know where the price action could be breaking out here or breaking out here. Okay, type one in the chat, that makes sense. We're looking at price action for what it is, not at animal patterns and say, hey, I see an eyeball, I see an eyeball, I see a little nose, I see a mouse. Oh my God, this is a pattern. This means he's going down. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean a damn thing. It's just painting a pattern in your head that you've been trained from a retail perspective to trade patterns to make it easier for you to understand. And it's not like that. Okay? It happens to play out like that, but there's no statistical 100% probability it's going to always happen. So let's just look at it for what it is. Right? We have a swing low. We have a swing high. We have a swing low. Now we got to see where it's going to go. Just because it's a swing low, logically it looks like it will go up, but it could go down. So don't be surprised. So we have to be able to be able to see where is our smart money concept of market structure of where price is going to go. Okay, that's very, very important. Okay, we have our supply up here. We have a major supply level right here that has not been mitigated. You guys see that? There's nothing that came up here and mitigated. Not even that came pretty close. Okay, nothing so far. So with the interest rate decision here, we are currently need to see this break. Let me, let me zoom in so you guys can see the candlestick pattern. Very, very clear. Mark this on your chart if you have it. You want to be very, very clear. Mark it in your notes. So right now, price is right here. This is the daily candle. It's forming right now, right? Price is coming down, right? You see this line? That's where price is at right now. It's coming down. So with price coming down, it may continue bearish, and that's fine, but it may hit this line. You see this little, little, little candle right here? That it may hit that line. That's a liquidity line at 102.579, and boom, take off. Or it may drop, okay? We are most likely are going to see this, get a preview of what's going to happen tomorrow at tomorrow CPI, we will be ready for this, okay? So if the market drops, we're gonna look at the CPIs and see if we are going to short this, meaning sell, or we're gonna buy it, right? Now, looking at this pattern logically, here, here, logically, what is the logical reaction of this uh, what should it do? It failed to make a lower low. It failed to make a lower low. Are we in an uptrend? Yes. Have we taken out this low? No. Um, we have a, I would say this is, let's say this is a higher high. I, I can see this is a high. This is a lower high, if you will. Uh, you guys, you can, we can put that. We really, uh, this could be, that can be considered a lower high. Let's just say we got two lower high right here. And then we have a higher high. We got a lower high. And then we had a higher high. Lower high right here. Higher highs. Nope, it's not a higher high. I didn't take that out. So this is a lower high. And we look like we're creating, we're going to break the structure maybe. Creating a lower low. Right? So the thing is, we got to watch is how price come down and react to this particular line. That's what we're looking for, is to bring it down, right? We got this lower high right here. We're going to see if we're going to create a new lower low, right? And in creating that new lower low, does it take out this previous low? This is our market structure. We got to see if it's going to break that. If it does, we all know what's going to happen. It's going to break. We need to see a retest. We got a change of character. It's called a choke. Change of character. Change of character means it's going to be a change in the dynamic of this market structure. We'll no longer be going up. We possibly could be going down. 
That is our line in the sand, 102.579. That's what I'm going to be looking for. At least we're going to be looking at this, right? I don't think this is down here as the lower low. This is, to me, this is going to be the most recent lower low. I mean, higher low that we need to see taken out, right? So this would be a new lower low breaking that structure. Um, right here it would be that change of character. Right here, that's a change of character. And we're gonna see a, a break. And if we see a retest, that to me right here is telling me we are going lower. That's kind of, to me, it's kind of a line in the sand. Even though this is the change of character, this is kind of the line in the sand for me. Okay, type one in the chat, that makes sense. Now, having said all that, we get that. What the hell happened, right? That could be CPI, right? CPI news could come in worse than expected, right? So let's go back to the news. On Tuesday, we're expecting a CPI of which 4.9, and they're expecting interest rate. This is the uh, inf inflation. Inflation rate is at 4.9, and they're expecting it to come down at 4.1. I got to tell you, if it comes in at 4.1, 4.0, 3 3.9, if it comes in at the same or lower, we should expect to see the dollar tank make one in the chat that makes total sense right we should see the dollar tank if we see a 4.2 even though it is lower than the previous 4.9 we get a 4.3 we get a 4.4 and if we even get a 4.9 meaning it matches the previous that means which cpi inflation hasn't gone anywhere <laughs> like it's that means we should see the dollar go strong and shoot up. Okay. But that being said, that's going to be Tuesday, tomorrow, right? We are going to see exactly what the hell this dollar going to do. So tomorrow, today, don't expect much, right? We're not expecting much, right? No one. You should know better. It's Monday. No news. So we're going to expect to see what happened with this dollar tomorrow. Is this dollar going to shoot up? And is inflation going down as it should or is it not? Right Now, this jump, does that mean it's going to continue? Because it's just CPI. We can come up, we can just mitigate, and then we can just come down. I point at the top, that makes sense. Right? This could be CPI, and this could be FOMC. Plain and simple. It makes sense. Go up, grab supply. Hello, we sell from supply. And come down and come down to this demand zone. Demand, right? CPI, FOMC. Could that happen? Absolutely. So I'm playing, I'm giving you guys various scenario of what can happen. Isn't that sucks? Don't you guys wish you can say, okay, Leonard, it's going to go up, pull back, and it's going to go up. Isn't that great? Would you guys like that type one in the chat? If that makes clear sense, if I can just tell you it's going to go up, it's going to pull back, and it's going to continue on, and we're all going to be fine. Everything's going to be perfect. Everything's going to be so easy. All you got to do is do inverse correlated to USD and just sell the damn thing. Isn't that cool? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be easy? It's far from. So pay a close attention because trading is just not that simple like that. It doesn't work as A equals B, A, B, and C comes out to B, and 1 plus 1 equals 2. Because in, in an irrational market, guess what? 1 plus 1 does equal 3. I know. It sucks because it doesn't logically make sense. It's not designed to be. It's not designed to make logical sense for you. It's not designed for you to understand it like that. It's not designed for you to... To, to be simple and logical for you. Because if it is, it would be so damn easy. Everyone be doing it. Okay? So that's what makes sh sh the challenging part of understanding price action so crucial. Okay? It can do anything. 
Heaven can think the dollar is going to go up. Brad can agree. And then Joe said, well, this looks like it's going down. Right? Eric may say, hey, I don't even know what the hell's going on. It looks like it can go nowhere. Right? And I can say, guys, it can go either or. Right? Who's right? Who's wrong? Do we go based on how I feel? Do we go based on what Kevin feels? Maybe what Brad feels. Everyone goes and agree with how he feels. Your feelings, your emotions, my feelings, my emotions, my bias, what I think, how I feel, what I want is irrelevant. Type one in the chat. That makes total sense what I'm saying. Who cares? It's what Christ does. We got to see what this thing does. And it means we got to wait and we got to be patient and we got to be emotionally and psychologically unbiased to what we want, to what we feel, and trade what we freaking see. You don't trade what you hear. You don't trade what you read. You don't trade what you think. You don't trade what you feel. You trade what you see. If this market drops, don't think, I got to buy. You sell. You already know exactly what's going to happen. When it breaks here, we're going to probably see it drop. If it goes up, you don't sell. We need to buy. Right? That's plain and simple. Right? We have an early detection. Now, you don't buy when it's up here. It's already made this move. What the hell are you doing? You should have bought down here. You don't sell when it gets here. What you doing? You should have sold right here. You don't sell at the bottom. You don't buy at the top. You buy one and sell when it moves. So we got to wait and see what the institution is going to do. As of right now, my job is to really explain to you what we'll probably typically see, right? So in terms of bias, I really don't have a bias at this point in terms of exactly what I think is going to happen. But based on the technical charts, the dollar should get stronger. Right, We got this low, we got this high, we got this low. We're in an uptrend. We're not in a downtrend. So technically in the market, we're not clear of a change of character yet. And we haven't breaking out this for me to clearly say we're, we're in a full-blown downtrend. Okay? As of right now, I'm looking at possibly going up. Everything is kind of pointing technically. Type one in the chat if you guys totally different disagree and say, Leonard, this is a downtrend. If you're looking at this, let me know. If you're looking at something else, let me know. But right now, to me, this looks like it's still going to be a bullish turn. We still have a high probability coming up here. The other evidence I see that we have some volume imbalance here. These are very, very clear. Right here, that's one environment balance. We got one way over there. These two volume imbalances are like magnets, right? So like a magnet. Price come to me. Price come to me. You get what I'm saying? It's like a magnet, right? So very, very big, right? There's not a lot of uh, volume. In fact, there's no volume imbalance over here at all. Uh, I take that back. Look like we may have one right here. Uh, we got one. Might be a small one right there. I'll take that back. We may have a small one right there. Yeah. Okay. Other than that, that could be easy mitigated, right? Yep. And go straight up. Okay. So we do have a little small volume imbalance right there. Two candlestick doesn't body doesn't close or overlap. Nope. We just got two wicks. Yep, that's a volume imbalance. Small one. Doesn't look like that. Or does it? Nope, that's a gap. Huh? Yep, we got a volume imbalance gap. So small one right there. It did point that out. Okay, so that can be easy mitigated and then come back up, right? So my evidence tells me that we got a double bottom. We haven't been able to take this out. We got a size, We got a high supply level right here. That has not been mitigated. So we have an unmitigated supply, but we got a mitigated demand zone. Okay? A mitigated demand zone and unmitigated supply level. We got two premium imbalances here, and we have not come out and taken out rebalances, volume imbalance. So my, my, my technical charts are telling me we should see a stronger dollar. That's why we trade it with the dollar 
right? Being being strong, we're looking at the dollar to be strong so that we can possibly get into an opportunity with the dollar crosses, okay? And then this is our equilibrium right here. So the equilibrium between this swing high and this swing low is sitting right here. And we got a volume balance sitting right there too. So there's a high probability, not only we get this, but could FOMC reaction actually cause this instead? Wouldn't that be a shocker? Could happen. But if it does go up, would we be surprised if the FOMC rate decision push price actually the opposite and the dollar actually goes stronger? Would we be surprised technically? Fundamentally, I think we can understand. Fundamentally, we'd be surprised. We're like, hey, that doesn't make sense. The dollar should be going down. But technically, would we be surprised? The answer is no. We should not be surprised if price comes up and hits with this equilibrium and balance, right? If I tell you and not telling you what happens and you see price does this, and let's say by the end of the week, you didn't know what was going on. You were on vacation and you came back. And I said, Kevin, what? Can you believe the price came up this far? And you look and go, well, hold on, let me see. Swing high, swing low. That's equilibrium. He goes, yeah, 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 I did. I mean, I swing, I, I pulled it from here, down here, just like Linda said, from the top down. And that was the 50%. And we're in the premium discount. And it went up to the, oh, right here. It went up to the 50% level right here. And you're not knowing anything about the news. What would you would you be surprised to go? Oh, I'm I'm actually surprised it went that high. Would you be surprised? Yes or no? No. I'd be like, okay, yeah. It, it that's that's typical, right? We we would expect price to come at that high. That's that's not uncommon. That's not you know that's un, not unusual. Okay, but the FOMC rate decision was a pause. What? And price went up. Now that's surprising because fundamentally, no interest rate should weaken a dollar and it should strengthen the indices and the equities. Now that fundamentally, yeah, I'm surprised on that, but I'm not surprised technically. That makes sense. So I hope that makes sense. We're not talking about the yen right now. We're talking about the dollar. Please pay attention to what we're talking about. This is all about the dollar right now. Let me know if this makes sense or not. If you're paying attention to something else, let me know. You can pay attention to something else, but right now I'm focused on the dollar. It's got to be very, very clear. If it's not clear as water and you're focused on something else, then go ahead and focus on something else. But I'm focused on the dollar right now. Okay? Okay, guys. So this is what we're going to possibly see. Um, we should see the dollar possibly strengthen. So don't be surprised that the dollar and CPI we see this go up, therefore we need to do something with gold and everything else. So let's see if everything else is correlated when it comes to the dollar. If we're expecting dollar strength, possibly for CPI at least, FOMC, we'll, we'll worry about that tomorrow to see if price goes up. Because if price goes down with CPI, then possibly FOMC will possibly continue to push it down unless it breaks structure here. If it doesn't break structure, and it just taps this, then it could be just a third tap. But anything tapping the third area of this mitigated demand zone should, should continue to weaken. Okay? So we'll, we'll take a look, and we'll take a look each day, especially with the CPI, the AI report that we have access to. We'll see what happens today at the close of today to see if we get this break or not, right, to see if we're going to go and go up. But in my technical understanding of price action, we may see a higher, higher dollar with CPI. That's technically, and I don't even know what the CPI name, number is going to come in. I really don't. I have no clue what the CPI number is going to do. So if the dollar goes up, don't say, Leonard, you call it. You're a fortune teller. I'm not. I'm just saying technically, this is what the dollar should do. I don't know what the hell the fundamental 
numbers are going to be. But technically, if I didn't even see the numbers or what numbers are going to do, I would put my money on possibly dollar going up and put a stop loss or hedge it and see what I can do. But high probability, I think it's going to be positive. So I'm kind of like, let's see, right? Um, this does look like it's coming down, but we don't have a clear change of character yet. Okay. So that being said, let's go to the correlated and uncorrelated market. Let's start with um, S&P 500, which is completely inverse correlated to the dollar. Not completely like a high probability to let go, but whatever the dollar does, this should typically go inverse correlated. Okay. So let's look at this market and you can see what's going on here. Okay, we see the dollar, uh, S&P, sorry, equities market. This is kind of leading indicator of the stock market, having this nice bull run, right? From 2020 all the way to about right here, January, 2022, right? And all of a sudden we get this. And then we get this change of character right here. Boom. And we come back up, we test this. We test that change of character and boom, we're in a bear market. Ugh. Right? The market just tanked. Then we came back up and we created a society. Everybody's like, oh, wait, yes, yes. We're, we're, we're recovering. This is August 22 last year. No, we're not. And we'll go even lower, right? So then we get a percent ch change of 27% total bear market bottoming out right there. Right down here in October, right? So October last year, we seem to bottom out at around 35.04 on S&P 500. This is the bottom. It's just the end of the bear market. And then we started going up. Then we hit this. And then we came back up. We hit this again. We came down. We hit this. Came back up. And this is where we're at right now. Okay? That's where we're at right now. That makes sense? You guys see it? So, where are we? We're at the same place we hit in August 2022. Oh, okay. So what happened in August 22, 2022? Did it break? Did it go up? No. Hello. It went down. You see that? Oh, okay. Can we expect that here? Logically, we should. Logically, based on historical movement. Right? So historically, which should see a break. It should, but this is an irrational market, which should, doesn't always happen, right? So we need to see what the hell is getting ready to go on, okay? So now we are at a critical and pivotal point. So let's break this S&P market down. Keep in mind where the dollar is at that we just looked at. We have this supply zone. This is the origination of the supply zone. Market comes up, mitigate, boom, boom, breaks away, boom. And now it came down. It came back and we tested that same exact price and then boom, tanked it and created this bottom. Okay. That's the bottom of the market since 2000, November 20, right? Since recovering from COVID. Right here. This is the COVID situation, market crash. Boom, COVID, crash. President Trump market says, hey, we're shutting down the economy. Boom. Okay, market reacted. That sucked. Right? Market dropped um, down near 29%. Okay? Then we came back up here, season high, recovering from the COVID situation, and then the market tanked again. Now it's 27%. 27, 29% seem to be the average of a bear market right here and right here. That's a bear market. Okay, this look like this might be the bottom of the market. That's the typical average, all right? Now, coming over here, we got to break this down now. 
where the market's going to do because we know where the market's been. We know where the market's at. Now we got to predict where the market is going. That's our job. We have a job to do, just like everyone else got to go in and, and, and work. Whether you got to work at the office, you got to work at your business, or you got to clock in and, and throw cases and work at a freaking store. This is our job. This is what we got to do, right? And to have this job, we have to be able to understand it. We have to be price engineers. Welcome to trading, right? You guys ready? Let's break this down. How can we read this? How can we trade this? Or do we just said, man, I don't have a clue. It's 50-50. Let me gamble. Um, sure. You're going to gamble and say, sure, why? I don't know. It just looks good. Is that good enough for you? Not good enough for me. That's not price engineering. That's guessing. That's gambling. Who's gambling? You are? I'm not. Not with my money. I don't think you should be gambling with yours. So let's read this. So let's read it properly. So we got this high. We got this low. Where's the equilibrium in this damn thing? Anybody knows? Did anybody think about that? Right? So let's let's do the equilibrium. So we, this is a this is a discount. Anything below the fifty percent is the discount. Make sure you write this down if you don't have it. Discount zone. This is where we look to buy. Anything above the fifty percent of a major swing market factor is a premium. This is where we look to sell. Holy smack! What should we be doing? Right? Okay. So we should be looking for sell, but the market looks bullish, does it not? I would agree with you. It is an uptrend. I kind of argue at that point. Everyone sees that. That's a low. That's a high. It's a lower high. high. I mean, high or low. Uh, higher highs, higher lows. Higher highs, higher lows. We're making higher highs and higher lows. Right? So it's naturally you think it's going to continue on. It could. It could. There's a possibility. What's the probability? Probability? I think we may come be coming down. So, but for this to happen, the dollar would have to be strength, right? It has to be strengthened. So we have... We're at a critical point, and I'm not going to call the highs and lows and say, I know exactly what it's going to do. It's going to keep going. CPI is going to push this. I don't know what the hell CPI is going to do. I don't know, I don't know what the CPI number is going to be, number one. All right, that's the second thing. And the second thing we don't know is what? How the market's going to react to it. Those two things right here, when it comes to news, we don't know what the CPI numbers data are going to be. And number two, we don't know how the market's going to react, if it's going to react negatively and positively. We don't know if the dollar is going to be going up because of how the market's going to react. The market, the number can come down negative and the market can react positive. The market, the number can come in neg uh, positive and the market can react negatively. Or if they can act inconsistent, it can be consistent with one another aligned. If the CPI numbers come negatively in the market, you know, there's so many variables that can happen fundamentally that we can't just sit here and stress over that. Would you agree? There's so many things that can happen. So what we got to do is figure out what typically we got to see from a price action standpoint. Okay? So that means we need to see a break of this structure right here. And right now we don't have it. If CPI breaks that, CPI pumps up, where are we going? If, if it breaks, where do you think most likely we're going to go? Up. Uh, does it have any reason for it to go up? Uh, yeah, there's quite a few reasons for it to go up. Okay, number one, we got some fair value gaps here, imbalances, and we have a nice supply area here, a supply area here, we got the all-time high, right, of the market. 
and the market is fully recovering and we are done. This is 2023 and we are going up, baby. Market's doing great. I don't feel that way yet. And I can be completely wrong, but it doesn't matter how I feel. Remember, it's about what I think, that, it's about what happens with price access. Not what about what I think, it's about what I see when the market breaks this, okay? So we don't know yet, but I tell you what, when this thing breaks and retests, I'm a buy, right? However, <clears throat> based on the technicals, we should see a pullback on this at a very minimum. We got some imbalances here. We got some fair value gaps here, right? We got a lot of liquidity sitting way over here. Okay. So with the dollar being strong, I would expect obviously the pullback on SAP 500. And I will say, if you look at the four hour time frame, let me let me pull the four hour time frame. The market is looking bearish right now on this four hour. You see that gray color on that candlestick? That is coming down. It hit that high. The blue line is that high from the previous high that I pointed out. It hit that almost to the pip. And it looked like it came back up again, it kind of retest, and now it's looking like it's coming down. This is the four hour time frame. And it looked like it wants to come down. Let me move this, okay? So we haven't broken that high. We didn't break that, right? Critical high, we didn't break it. And it's looking like it's looking bearish to me. So coming back here, it's a high probability. We're going to come down at least these fair value gap and clear this out. Okay. Now, we need to see the break of structure. And that break of structure would be after this right here. This high or low would need to be broken. This break of structure. And if we get that break of structure, then we'll have a downtrend and a change of character. And we're going down, folks. We're going down. And this trend line, I drew this trend line to, to be able to, for you to easily see your mind, to see patterns for me to explain what I'm seeing here. This is a clear uptrend, yes. But we had a very critical supply level. Anything above this is a line in the sand that the market's fully going to recover, right? Um, the market is saying that the economy is doing great and we're doing awesome and the dollar is just in the equities market and everything else is doing great, right? And the dollar is going to continue to get weaker. Just what we need to happen, for that to happen. The dollar gets stronger, this is going to tank, okay? Type one in chat, everyone makes sense. This is exactly what we need to see if that happens. This comes down, dollar is weak, but this goes up. I mean, if this goes up, dollars weak. If this comes down, dollar is strong. Okay, hope that makes sense. Now we're above this equilibrium, and we're in a premium. That means we should be at least looking for a pullback back to the equilibrium, at least, right? So this could be CPI data. I mean, so many things can happen because of news, and and I hate to say this, but CPI can come down, and then FOMC could push this up. CPI can come down and FOMC pushes up. CPI can go up and FOMC pushes You see with the scenarios, how, how do you trade it? We gotta wait, that's all. We're not market makers, we're market followers. Let me repeat that, we're not market makers, so don't anticipate it. We're market followers. We can only predict with a high probability of what the market's gonna do, and then we gotta follow it after it makes this move, after it gives us the clue, okay? All right, so that's S&P 500. Let's look at gold. And let's see if it's consistent with the theme of the dollar getting stronger. Right now, it looks like this is the theme. It, it, it looked at critical high that it would make sense for it to come down historically to mitigate this cell, this cell supply area to come back down. So at least this other trend line or at least clear this, this sell side liquidity and then go up. So this kind of supports the dollar being strong this week 
So let's see what the gold say. Let's go look at gold market. We're going to look at two markets so far. So let's keep going. All right. So this is the factor of the gold. We see how gold made this high three times. And what it did do it three times went down. Look, if you guys didn't catch this, I don't know what to say. This is the first time it went down. Hit this price for some damn reason. Went down. All right. Well, it looked like it hit a ceiling. It came back up here again. What the hell would you do? Guess what? Can you believe people bought this? It went down. It repeated twice. Guess what? It came back up again. What the hell do you think it's going to do? It's going to go up. Uh, no. For the third time. Hello? Did you see price? Did it not go down? Uh, let me see. Sell. Um, sell. Uh, sell. Um, who said trading was hard? Uh, this guy named Leonard who said it was it was very hard to do. I, I this looks simple to me. Uh, hello. <laughs> right? You guys see that, right? I just want to make sure it's very clear. So we got this market coming down. We got this low, right? Obviously, swing high, swing low. We came back up half to fifty percent. Came back. It had a great pullback. But then the market recovered and went right up to the high. Are we in a downtrend or uptrend? Anyone? Uh, Looked like a downtrend to me. Yeah, I would agree. It Doing the same thing like you said here. It looked like it did the same thing there. And it looked like it's going to keep going lower. I would agree. But for that to happen, the dollar has to be Oh, wait, the dollar has to be strong. Ah, this is supporting possibly a stronger dollar. Okay, well, let's make sense. Let's break this factor down. So, okay, first of all, where is our equilibrium on this thing? Let's draw it out. From this swing, swing high. That's a 50% right here. So we're still in a premium. We should be looking for sales. I, you don't have to tell me. I, this is what the, the, the data's telling us. This is what the chart's telling us. Okay, so let's break it down. Let's get some more confluence. Okay, we're in a range here. Obviously, you guys can see this. We've been in this range since you know May 2000, uh, May 17th. So May 17th, we've been in this little range, right? We got this little high, and we bounced off this floor, and we came back to the ceiling. Well, we came back to that ceiling, bounce, 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 bounce. Um, we're bouncing all over in this range. Is it going to break out? Yeah, it's going to break out here or here. Okay, which way is going to break out more high probability? Well, since we're in a downtrend, it should break out here. Okay, well, that's one. What other confluence that we can say support this? Well, we have to see a dollar strength. Right now, we don't have it. That's right. We don't have it. So could price come up here? It sure can. It has every right to. Could price poke up? It's, it could because it's a little value, value gap here. Could price come up here? It can. It can do whatever it wants. And that is a key supply area. And then could price drop down from there? It could. It could. It, it, it truly could. But... We have to understand, let's break this down. So this is the, the recent high. So that means if we get this break, we got a break of structure. Yep, we do. And if we come up here, that's great. But as long as we stay above here and we go up, then we have a change of character. That means it's going to go higher. And that for that to happen, the DXY, because it's inverse correlated, more inverse correlated than the S&P 500, that means this has to be weak. The dollar has to be weak. And we just said that the dollar possibly could go stronger. Now, if the dollar could be conversely, go, inversely go stronger, that means this got to drop. 
But what's the reason for it to drop? Well, number one, we're in a premium. We're in a premium zone. And we have a lot of yellow boxes here. What is that? That is a fair value gap imbalance. That means price was imbalanced with so much buy orders that there was not enough sell orders. So the market has to be balanced. So price could be rebalancing itself back to equilibrium. Hello? I'm bearish. Unless the market tells me otherwise. Type one in chat, that makes sense. So far, technically, it's going into a stronger dollar. It's, would you guys agree? I, I'm not I'm not trying to convince you and twist your arm, but I'm just going based on technicals. Okay? Uh, and that's what it looked like to me. And I would look to sell once I get the break out of this box. So, in other words, I'm not looking to sell this, especially with news coming up that can throw this out of this range either way. So, I'm going to wait until I get a break and I'm looking to possibly short gold. Okay, because the dollar could go stronger. And if it goes the other way, then I'll wait for the market to give me some sign. All right, let's move on. Um, before I move on to that, let me check a couple more um, that are kind of like related to the dollar, but not technically. Let's look at Bitcoin. Look at Bitcoin. We got a, we got a little flag here, got a bull flag. I, I know retail trader mindset out there. <laughs> All right, take a look. Um, we came down. Uh, we came down all the way here, and we're basically almost at a fifty percent right here. But I don't think we're going to come that low. I think we're going to go higher because we're in this little trend line. And we're going to see a break. Right. I think, you know, obviously 2023, this is going to be the year of the Bitcoin. The Bitcoin winner is over. We were down here. Right. And we are, yeah, we are in an uptrend. Hello. This is an uptrend. Definition of an uptrend. Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. Maybe higher low. And then we're going up here. Okay. So we're looking at 40,000, 42,000, 48,000. For it to go lower, we got to have, it just filled this imbalance right here, just, by the way. For it to go lower, we would have to have a break of this low right here. All right. We did have a break of structures here. We did. I would agree. And it looked like it's in the retesting phase right now for a change of character, but it's not completely saying that this is a downtrend as yet. Okay. If price comes down here, then I would say, yeah, we got a change of character. We could be seeing prices come down to 20,000 again. And if we don't get that, then we're getting that. Okay. That's Bitcoin. Let me jump off the Bitcoin train. Let's go to oil. What's going on with oil? Let's take a look at oil. We were in oil. Got a nice little buy trade. That was with the OPEC news. That was great. And then Canada came in and for some reason, boom, we got a tank in oil. So if you look at oil, look at oil from a daily perspective, you know, we got this oil come way up here back in March, 2022. We all know what happened there, right? Russia invaded Ukraine, shot up oil prices. They came back, 50% of the move right here, boom, boom. 50% snap back as it shot up vertically almost, came back 50%, retest it, and then we've been on this downtrend right here. We're at the ceiling, the floor, I'm sorry. We're at this floor that we have mitigated quite a few times. That was the first time, second time. Third time, fourth time, fifth time. Anybody want to go for the sixth time? You see how this is, I know. You see how this is easy. But for me, it is. For you, you probably have to see this quite a few times, and I'm hoping I'm making it easier for you to read it, okay? One, two, three, four, five. It looked like we're coming back down, folks. 
hate to say it, but oil's coming down. Now, what I don't know is when oil comes down, is it going to break up, right? Because we kind of bounce off of that quite a few times. But I can tell you, the more time we bounce off of it, most likely we're trying to break through. We're kind of test it, test it, test it, test it, test it, test it. Oh, we got a break, right? You're going to poke it so many times, it's finally going to break. So I think we're going to be seeing lower prices of oil. I like to see that, obviously, for personal reason. <laughs> lower gas prices, right? So if the oil is coming down, we're looking bearish here. We have a hard time breaking this and breaking this. And on Friday and Thursday, it's coming down, right? So I think we're going to come down here. And then I am looking for a break of this or a retest and come back here. That is what we're going to need to see. And I think our AI software is going to help us with that. But as of right now, we should be looking to sell oil. Okay, so I'm bearish on oil right now. Now let's get back to the to the euro and the dollar. Let's go to our dollar crosses. Start with the euro dollar. Uh, look at these circles. This kind of helped me easy to see. Oh, this is a high. That was a swing high. That was a swing low. That's a low of the market. That's a swing high as a pullback, but we didn't go all the way back. Okay, and we're back to the same location. What do you think should happen right here? It should go down. Did it go down? Yes, it did. Oh, oh, okay. Well, how far is it going to go down? Well, how about that one? That's an easy target. That'd be one. That's one target. How about this target? That's equilibrium. Equilibrium to what? Equilibrium to this swing low. Did we get a high above that one? Yeah, right there. To this swing high. Oh, it, it is? Yeah. yeah. 50%. Oh, okay. So anything above the 50% is a what? Premium. And anything below 50% is a what? Discount. And anything in the premium, we should be looking to what? Short. And anything in the discount, we be should look in the what? Long. That's that's the numbers, guys. This is technical charts. We're in a downtrend. We're clearly in a downtrend. We're inverse correlated to the dollar. Everything is pointing to lower prices for your USD. And we haven't taken out this liquidity. We're in a key demand zone and we have a bear flag forming. So forget about the bear flag, but um, everything so far has consistent with the dollar possibly going strong. So I am bearish US, US, USD unless something tells me different right now, technically. Okay, so I... Don't know if buying your USD is smart right now with the upcoming CPI data. So if we're in a long, we may want to protect that. We may go a little higher, but not that much higher. There's a possibility we can go short. So buying probably not to be a best thing to do unless you're just scalping and you're just trying to get a short term. It could, it could go, not to say it won't. You know, we, it it could go because if you look at it from a weekly perspective, you can make an argument to say, well, Leonard, this looks like to be actually a higher low to the uptrend on the weekly. Oh, you're right. I would agree with that. We got a low. We got a you know, higher highs, higher low, higher highs, higher low. Yeah, I would agree with that. But this weekly uptrend would not be jeopardized if price came down to this equal low, would it? Uh, no, it wouldn't. It would still maintain the weekly, you know, weekly uptrend. 
Now, if it breaks this and it comes down to this equilibrium and come down here below parity, which I doubt it, but it could come down to equilibrium, right? It could test it and then continue, right? And therefore, it creates an uptrend now. If this is the equilibrium we balance from here to here, that could happen. Okay, so many scenarios. What we need to do is be able to trade it and be ready for it by looking at the market structure. This isn't a bear trend. We're in a very key daily demand area and we're looking for a break of this to go up with the dollar being weak or we're looking to sell this down to this equilibrium and we need to be ready for it if the dollar goes strong. Simple as that. We do have a couple imbalances to discount here. We got a discount um, imbalances here and here, but that doesn't mean we'll come down and mitigate it and come all the way down to 0.98. That would be crazy to go down below parity again, but it could happen, but we're not sure, right? We're not technically sure right now. What we do know is that there is a possibility we could balance it back to equilibrium, okay? Very, very important, high probability, but if price goes up, and it breaks this, take out this high, then we're going up, okay? <clears throat> so in other words, if price come down, we come up and we take out this high, we're going, okay? And anything I say about the equilibrium just gets moved up, that's all, because price is eventually going to come back and we and get to an equilibrium. If this 50% keeps following, if the market keeps making higher, highs. Okay, that's all that means. It doesn't mean it never comes back to equilibrium. It just, it just means it moves up. And then when it finally comes back and it does make an equilibrium, and then it may tap it and then go back up. Okay, hope that makes total sense. But as of right now, this is where it stands. And this is going to be a hot week to determine which way it's going to go, right? I think you guys will all agree. This week will determine if the market is going to be up and we're going to be bullish for the rest of the summer or if we're going to be bearish and we're coming back, we're going to have a, a nice bear run um, on the on the dollar bull run, um, we're going to be long in a dollar to sort EURUSD, and this is going to determine for the next month or two what we're going to be doing for EURUSD. This would be the deciding week. Awesome. That's great to know. Right? At least you know when it's going to happen this week. <laughs> All right, pound dollar, same thing. I'm looking for, um, wow, this is a little bit different. Not like the USD, where it's clearly this went up, but then again, pound USD is not taking out the high so far. Look like it's coming back to mitigate that previous high that was over here, that was created back in May last year, 2022. Right. So if price comes up here, look what it did. Boom. I'm back again. What do you think I'm going to do? Boom. I take a guess. That's a guess. But technically, that's what it should do, right? <clears throat> the other thing is, did we get a break of structure? That's the key thing. Um, did we create a lower high right there? Yes, we're there. Did we get a break? Yep. Did we get a clear change of character? No. So with that being said, we have not had a clear change of character. So this is a no. Break of structure, yes. Change of character, no. But the change of character, we need to see this come down, okay? Guess what? We're going to find out this week if this is going to be a change of character or no. If we get this break below here, guess what? This is target. Hope that makes sense. What's the equilibrium to this one? Um, I'm going to take it off this one right there. And we're looking at an equilibrium uh, all the way about that there. That would be the equilibrium to that. So we're in the premium, right? So that we need, we're looking for a break for this to continue on. And right now it looking bearish. Um, so we need to see what's going on.
Right now, the pound is looking weak. Dollar is looking a little strong still. That's great. Driving a little bit of strength. It is still fairly weak below the 50 line, but it's making a little turn up here, right? So this is a currency strength meter, right? The currency strength meter tells us each what's going on with each of these currency. Anything below this zero, I mean, it's weak. Anything above is strong, okay? So this yellow represents the dollar. You can see the dollar making its way towards the zero line. All right, everyone see that? That's the zero line. So that zero line represents the, the separation between the weak and the strength. Anything above is strong, anything below is weak. So the strong currency is up here and the weak currencies are down here. Swiss French is the weakest. This right here is odd. Hope you guys are color, not colorblind. If you are, just move your mouse way over here and you'll see. You see the values. You see this little legend that pops up. Australian dollar is 32.78. And let me erase this real quick. Australian dollar 32.78 and Swiss France is what? 39.12 is the weakest currency. Okay. All right. Japanese yen, looking fairly strong. It was weak. It was way down here, huh? And look at Japanese yen, picking up strength. You go yen. All right. Okay, seven. Okay, 7.4. But the pound, it's weak. Pound is at 15. Pound is at 13. Euro is kind of strong. Okay. NCD is strong. So NCD is the second strongest currency. Euro is picking up strength. Dollar is picking up strength, but the dollar is still compared, fairly weak compared to the red line, which is Euro, compared to Euro, right? And Canada is right in the middle, so I'm not worried about Canada. But right now, pound is looking below the dollar, so it's ranging right now. But other than that, overall, pound is weak, and it's the weakest currency as of right now going into London session. I mean, New York session. Okay. But let's bring that back to our current um, market analysis. It's important to understand about what we're expecting to see with the pound. So if the pound is weak, we could be expecting this. Now on Tuesday, if the dollar gets strong on the USD on Tuesday, we're going to see that breaker structure right here. And then if we say this, you guys already know what to say. I shouldn't even ask you when it was shortened. That's right. You're telling me. Right. That's great. Right? But as of right now, we do not see a, a, a new high. Do we see a new high yet? Not yet. Got to see that break of structure. If we don't see that. It would just look like this trend line, just shifting market structure, trend line right here, may hold. Right now, we see a lower high. We got a lower low, got a real good lower low. We broke that low right there, right? We broke that low. That was a clear low right here, but we didn't we didn't hold. We broke back through, came back to retest this, and now we're trying to see if we're going to break this lower low and stay with a change of character. If we do, guess what, folks? I got a pretty good idea. I got a pretty good hunch. Something telling me it's coming back for this equilibrium, especially take out this little fair value gap right there. And then we can go higher, right? That's just how the market works. Okay, pound dollar. I'm bearish. Uh, that's so far it's following that thing. Dollar possibly strong for this week. And we we don't know. It, it can do anything. Okay, let's go to odd dollar. This is odd. A U D Australian dollar against the dollar. Right here, Australian dollar AUD against the USD. What's going on in Australia? What is going on? You guys are strengthening your dollar. That is great. Bouncing back. 
All right, so let's look at this fight for Australian dollar against the U.S. dollar. Uh, we were in this nice little downtrend. They were in a nice little uptrend. We'll pull back. Did we get this equilibrium over here? Fifty percent. Did we get it? We came back. Yep, we did. We took it out right there. We hit the six one eight, and we came back even lower, and we're back in the premium. All right. So take a look. I want you to see this. Look at, and the downtrend up here came back up. Downtrend that's coming back to do what? You see this circle over here? Just move it to the right. What? So if it comes up here, what would you do? Well, it's if this comes down, that means the dollar will have to be strong. So technically. It looks like it might freaking do that. <laughs> Would you agree? I I don't I don't know what to say. It's it could go up, but there's a lot of freaking sell orders over here, right? So this is again. I'm just looking at the chart. If something if this price goes up, I mean technically, I mean it, it just forgets everything what I just said and just say, hey, we we got this break, let's buy. Okay, we would have to see that, and the dollar would have to be completely weak. That's plain and simple. Dollar would just have to be weak, and, and we're going up, and we're going to attack this high. Okay, so if the dollar goes weak, then we're going up. But right now, right, right here, right now, we have not broken that high yet. We didn't break it here. We didn't break it here. We didn't break it here. I don't know if we're going to break it there. So the retest looked like to be in order. But again, if we do get a break, then right now it won't be a, a right now. It'll be <laughs> right then. Then we're coming up for this high. This would be my target. Target. And I think you guys would agree with that. But technically, right now, um, it's going up. I, I I agree with you. In a lower time frame, especially if you look at you know, let's go to the four hour. Yes, I would agree. This is an uptrend. Yep, dollars, Australian dollars doing great. Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. I I get it. Um, but this is the high, and this is a liquidity level, and this is a supply zone. So. So I would agree that it is an uptrend. But could this be the ceiling of the uptrend? It could be. I would agree with that too. So we need to see what happens in this area. And I think we're going to find out tomorrow. And if the dollar is strong, we're going down, folks. And I can tell you there's a lot of reasons It can go down, right? Because if it goes down, it does what to all of these imbalances and liquidity? What does it do? Well, it covers them all out. It's called cleaning up price action. It did it here. It did it here. It cleaned all this up. It cleaned all of these imbalances. How? By this price action over here when it went up, it cleaned all this up. It did. You want to see what it looked like? I'll show you. You see that? They're all right there. Everyone sees it? Dude, all these imbalances. Look at all these imbalances. It's got to get cleaned up, meaning this price got to come back and mitigate that. Would you agree? Did it not do that? 
Let's see. It's going lower. It's not coming up. Oh, wait, hold on. What? It, it is. It is coming. Well, it got two more to go, and it's not going to come up that high. Oh, maybe not. Uh, maybe I was wrong. It, this, it's not going to come way up this high. Not this high. Well, it did. Holy smack. It cleaned all that freaking thing. Are you serious? I mean, how did you know? It's called experience. It's called price action. It's called training. Do you guys agree? You guys just saw how market it just cleaned up all of this. So what do you think could possibly happen over here? I'm not saying it absolutely guaranteed will with a 100% and you need to sell your house and your car and put all your money here and be a millionaire tomorrow. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying with a high probability, the stronger dollar, I think it's going to come down. I, I And we'll see. Okay. Hope you guys got a chance to experience that, right? All right, let's see that tomorrow. Okay, what about NC dollar? Let's go to NCD dollar. All right? How is that looking? Okay, where's the equilibrium on this one? Oh, let's 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 let's, let's draw it out. On this swing low, swing high right here. You guys see the fifty percent line right there? Uh, let me put it out all there. Mark that up, fifty percent. Boom. And move the box. That's equilibrium. That means when price made this reversal move up, and it finally no, that's not the high. It took out the high over here. Yep, that's the high. And it finally took out that high. That means it's going to come back down to at least fifty percent. No way. Price was not going to come down to 50%. Okay, hold on. I get it. I get it. When you see this, there's no freaking way it's going to come down 50%. That's way down here. I would agree. That That's, that's ludicrous. Uh, it's going lower and lower. Oh, that's lower. All right. And this is my marker. Obviously, this is still above 50%, though. This is how price did over time. We're looking at history. We played. You ever watch football film? You ever play sports and go back and watch what happened? <laughs> Why? Why do you think we watch what happened? that you can learn what could possibly happen again. If you don't watch film, you don't watch replay, if you don't back test, you'll never know what's going to happen in the future. Would you guys agree, yes or no? Anybody play sports? Anybody do basketball, coach basketball, coach sports, play sports? You guys watch what happened, <laughs> right? We watch what happened. Anybody watch hockey, play hockey? Anybody does that? Soccer, football, right? We watch what happened to make sure what can happen in the future, right? Who's who's going to win the Stanley Cup? Did the Stanley Cup did did the Stanley Cup win yet? You play, coach, watch. Okay, so this is fifty percent. Hasn't even hit it yet. Hasn't even hit it yet. It's it's far from, huh? It looks like it's going to go back up. Um, no, it's coming down. It's going to take out this little low liquidity. It's got to take out this low for it to come down. Let's play it around. Uh, let's pull back on. Uh, look like it's going up. See, you knew it wasn't going to come down, huh? Well, wait, hold on. It, it's only touched this. Well, okay, it touched that. Okay, it touched this high. It can't break this high. Oh no, it didn't break that high. It, it's falling. This is what it does. This is price action. Boom, took out that low. Boom, 50%. Isn't that freaking awesome? But you guys knew that, right? That's the point. 
That's my point. <clears throat> okay, so we did hit this equilibrium and we're breaking away from this equilibrium. equilibrium. What's our target? Um, how about this? How about up here? Maybe we can make that readjustment. How about that? That nice, look like a nice little target. You see this line before we broke down? That looked like a nice little target. We didn't come down that far enough to cover the fur value gap and mitigate this order block. This order block has been untapped, meaning it has not come back and mitigated and revisit. That's called mitigation. Mitigation means to, to lesser, right? It's not mitigate and lessen this drawdown. It has not come down to take out this drawdown that they're in when they created the fair value gap. They have to come down and mitigate this price action level. Sometime in the future, I don't know when, it could be anytime, sometime in the future, right? But could today be it? I don't know. CPI, it, it can come there or it can come there today, right? So I have this price up here, but you know, I could, maybe I'm being over optimistic. I was hoping that the New Zealand dollar is picking up some strength here, probably come up here, but this is probably too soon. We may just come here, come back down, and then go up and mitigate this and clean all this up and then break that and just go up just like that. Okay. But as of right now, I'm bearish on New Zealand dollar against the dollar. If the dollar is strong, right? Because I, I don't I don't have any guarantees. But right now everything looks like it's playing against the dollar strength. Okay, dollar CAD. What about dollar CAD? Here we are. You guys see it? Maybe. We're here right now. Okay. So that means for price to come up here, what has to happen with the dollar? Dollar has to be strong. Wow, this is just playing out. Everything is pointing so far to the dollar strength. Correct me if I'm wrong. What do you guys think? I, if, if, if this breaks down, and it could, that means we have to see dollar weakness. And it has reason to come down here. It does. It does. No, no lie. Just as much as it has reason to come up here. You see that? So which way is it going to be? Dollar weakness or dollar strength? We get dollar strength, it's going up. We get dollar weakness, it's going down. Right now, based on price action, you guys tell me. Price action says what? We should see a bounce. Why is that? It did it here. It did it here. It did it here. It did it here, it did it here, and it did it at a diagonal sense. Do you guys see this or am, am I making this up? Yeah? So I'm, I'm looking at possibly dollar strength in my opinion, and I, this is what I have to go by based on what I'm seeing technically, okay? So this is where we are right now. So we'll see. That's why I have this shaded white because it's not fulfilled. Okay. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I'm making mirrors, yeah. <laughs> I'm using mirrors, right? I'm yeah, I know. I'm just going based on price action. So <laughs> that's how we have to read it. So that's your dollar. How about US USD? 
USD switch France. USD switch France. Is US is switch France weak or strong right now? We just looked at it. Is switch France weak or strong right now? It's weak. USD switch France. If it's weak, um, this should be going up then. And it is. That's a strong uptrend. Okay, so let's look at this placker real quick and go back to the daily time frame. Let's take a look. Tell me what you guys think. This is your history since uh, 2011, 2015. This is the low over here of January 2021. Could we go lower? We could. We could. No doubt. For that to happen, the dollar has to be weak. But... Um, It looks to me we have a change of character, to be honest with you, right there. That is a, that is a lower low, lower high, lower low, equal high. We got a little bit lower low. And then we have a, a lower high again. Oh, wait, hold on. Just a, a little bit. High or low? Whoa, that's a that's a higher high, higher low, higher highs, higher low. Um, it looked like we may have a change of culture right here, just breaking retest, right? So, with that being said, folks, um, we got a premium balance up here. This is a, a supply zone up here. I would be bearish. Bullish, I'm sorry. Bearish on switch France, but I'm bullish on dollar switch France. And I think and I think it's gonna be a combination of both switch France being weak and dollar being strong. So I'm bullish. I'm bullish. I'm looking to buy. Okay. Let's go to yen. It's gonna be a good one. We got dollar and yen. Okay, this is uh weak. Ooh, this did not create a lower low. Ooh, lower high, took out this high, but we're in this supply zone here. So what does that mean? It can mean two things. Either we're gonna break it or we're gonna retest it. So we need to see the break of this to go higher. And what needs to happen? DXY. DXY strength, that needs to happen over against Japanese yen, right? Remember, this is a dollar against the Japanese yen, right here. We need to see the dollar take this up. That looked like a very good level, why? Because it's the premium discount, premium imbalance right there. And we need to see that possibly go higher. Okay, where's our equilibrium on this damn thing first? Uh, let's take it from here to here. How about that line right here, 50%. Okay, let's see that is our equilibrium. Are we right there? Oh, smack, we are. From this swing high to that swing low, we are right at equilibrium. So that means we're in a very indecisive territory and based on the origin of what created price to get into this equilibrium, it looked like we're in an uptrend. I don't agree with that. We got into supply and got to pull back a little bit, but we need to see the break of this right here. We see this break, it's going up, okay? If the dollar gets weak, then we're going down, okay? So this right here, we may pull back, 
we may, and it, we could still be in this uptrend. Uh, we may not. We need to see, right? Um, that's going to be the deciding factor, okay? Um, I don't think Japanese yen weakness is going to help on this at all. So I think this is definitely going to continue uh, on the uptrend, and this imbalance is make every sense at all. I mean, what so it does make sense totally with the DSY string, and I can see this coming back up now. I don't know if they go any higher than that because historically that is a pretty high dollar yen. Um, I know we've been there before prior, way back there, like right here, you see the two prices. So I went back and did some historical price movements way back from 1990 already. And I can tell you that these are the previous high if price continue to go up past this, we do have a 1990 high and we have a 1986 high, right? So in other words, if you go back and you take the ICE price data, see this, 1990 and 1986 right here, before we've seen any of this. Whoa, look at that, way back in here, back in 1971. What were you doing in 1971? Anyone old enough to remember what was going on in 1971, post-BML? All this imbalances, right? So we've been in this range right here, plain and simple, right here, this range between the United States and the yen since 1986, right? This is Reagan era. So 1986, we've been in this nice little range. So is it fair to say that based on this data since 1986, that we could possibly stay in this range? I mean, for the last 37 years, right? 1986, 2020, 37, right? 37 years, anybody 37 years old or younger, right? So is it fair to say that we could see the ceiling of this price action to come back down again? I don't know, I think so. I would agree with that. I would support that. We got a 37 year historical data that proves this theory. We haven't broken out of this high for 37 years. And if it does, it'll be historic. It'll be epic. Okay. But with that being said, let's go down to back to reality. So this is where I got that 1990 and 1986 high, just in case you're wondering that that is basically the line in the red sand that says there's no way I, I can never possibly see that. But with all of this price action, let's go back to the weekly. That's, that's a lot of price move, movement up here, okay? So um, I think prices, high, high prices is going to come for the dollar swing. Um, if dollar gets weak, then it's going down, right? This is about as high as we're going to go. But So in other words, we got to see this liquidity break right here, this high. We see this high, if we get that break, it's going, and CPI could do it. If CPI, CPI could get that break and FOMC could push it higher. Again, FOMC, uh, man, I know it's supposed to be no interest rate, but everything technically is showing that we may see a higher price. All right, all right, let's get out of the dollars. Let's go into the yen. What's going on with the yen? Okay, first of all, let's get into the dollar yen index. I think that'd be great. Let's get into the yen index. What's really going on with the yen? 
what is going on? Let's let's see here. All right. This is the low of the yen right here. Historical low since October 22, historically ever, right? Then we got this nice bull run. That was nice. We got with a nice little recovery, right? In January 2023 this year. Then all of a sudden we got weak. Couldn't take out the high that we enjoyed in January 23 when it kind of rebound everything. And then we've just been tanking ever since, right? Um, just one economic conditions after another economic conditions, and we've already had um, two um, interest rate decisions on the end already. Let's go back. We got the yen right here. So this year, we've already had one in January 17th. Well, that tanked it. March 9th, we didn't have... Same, no interest rate change. Look at previous act forecast, and it still came in actual. Same, same damn thing. And then April, what did it do? Same damn thing. So since January, we, no interest rate change. So since, since January this year, this is January 17th right here. See that? Look at Tuesday. You see that down here where it says January, January 17th? Tuesday, does this match up to this? Uh, yeah, January 2017. Okay, so what happened? Mark has been tanking. Came down, tried to recover, and then boom, another interest rate change. Uh-oh, we got a bell flag. What does that mean? Uh, uh, we could be seeing lower prices. Would you agree? Um, does it have a price action support? Yeah, we got a big old discount. The value gap sitting right there. We're at a key demand area zone right here. And it looked like it tried to pull out, but it's having a hard time breaking out of this zone here. Right? So all of these is having a hard time breaking out of this little zone. You got a little price action here. And we kind of came up, and it's looking bearish here. So may break out at JPY rate on Thursday. And this is the current candlestick right now. It's probably looking bullish, but I don't see this. I don't see this happening. So I'm going to erase that. And I in the camp to see this happen. Um, not that I want to. My bias, obviously, what I want and the bias is, is is inconsistent. Obviously, I want stronger yen, but uh, historic history tells us that it can come down. It should come down. But this is a rational market. So with that being said, there is a possibility yeah, it is. That the yen and everything else come in between it. Boom. Shoots up and takes out this equilibrium and takes out this equilibrium to go back to this supply order before it comes back down or something like that. So this can still happen. That That's the point. This, this uptrend can still happen because we do have an imbalance sitting way up here. Okay, I hope that's making sense so far. So anything can happen, you know, even though the yen goes negative interest rate, we should go down. But I'm giving you the price action to let you know where the yen is at. It's at a demand area. So it could bounce up. We are creating higher highs, higher lows. So we have not breaking this out, but 
this is a both uh, flag, meaning it could come down and it should come down. It should. It doesn't mean it will. Right? We'll see. So that's the yen index. It's looking bearish. So with that being said, going back to now, let's go to Euro, Euro, JPY. Let's see if that plays out technically. Well, hell, we've been in this uptrend on UHJPY, and we're at a high, and not we're not down here. So on a weekly, this is about as high as it's been on a monthly. It's about as high as it's been since, you know, 2002 on USD. So we're... We're here, but there is something that we see right here. So if price does want to come up, it does have a possibility to come up about another 1,400 pip. Any one of these is it's possible. Right? We haven't been this high since 2008. So... This at a key level. And you notice how it seems like we're at the key level at a time of an interest rate getting ready to happen. You notice that? It's just ironic, right? It just happened to be at this high at the perfect time on the week. The Japanese yen is getting ready to make its interest rate. Could could that be designed this whole time that move price, move price, move price, move price, move price until it gets to this level and let's hold it? And let's make sure it lands on the week of June 12th. Isn't that ironic? I don't think so. I think it's by design, right? For a reason. Okay. So right now, prices take it's half this high, half this high. And I got to tell you that price can do either or. And I have it right here. So I can't tell you exactly what the market is going to do because I don't. Here, price came down here. It could come down, but the market could take it up. So that's just why I'm not willing to take any new positions on any new pair because I don't have a clue of which way the market is going to react. Now, the market is clearly in the uptrend, and I can tell you this is not where you want to buy. You want to buy when the market pulls back. Make sure you note that and write that down. You buy on an uptrend when price pulls back. I repeat, you buy on the uptrend when price pulls back. You want a low price to buy. Right now, it's not the time to buy. So we need to wait. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for a break so that we can buy, or we're waiting for a pullback and then buy. We don't know what's going to happen. So right now, we got to wait. So my caution is I'm neutral right now in terms of in, until I see further price action. And I probably won't be able to see it until Thursday. Um, we got euro coming up. So euro strength may push this up. Right? Just euro. It could be a combination of euro and JPY. And I already told you there's 1,400 pip reason why it could still come up. Okay. So that is, uh, yen right now, it's like a dangerous place to trade right now. Let's look at pound yen. <clears throat> look at pound yen. Pound yen is way over here back in 2016. It's just weird that we're at this, at this high right here. And we haven't been past this high prior to 2015. Right, but if you look at the weekly, we have been higher than that. Um, prior to 2015, it was a little high for a little bit, and then we haven't been higher than that since 08. So, I'm not going to rely on this data other than it's there. The near price action is these highs right here, right? So, if you're looking at that. There is a thousand pip difference from here to here, right? Now, I'm already in this trade for sell, 
and I thought we were going to get that cell here, and I thought we were going to get that cell here, and we didn't, right? This, this obviously would have been a great place to short it right here, and it's a great place to short right there. And I took another one right here. So I'm, I'm shorting because it makes sense to short at these levels that been historically in the past fell and where it was located, okay? Now that we are here, um, it doesn't look like the market wants to cooperate and that happens sometimes. So JPY may continue strength. So the, less, the next logical area to short would be here. So if you have not gotten into yen cross, you may want to wait until after yen cross as well, the yen news on Thursday and take a short here. You'll be in a better, far more better price than me. This is a better, higher price to sell. You want to sell when price is high and you want to buy when price is low, right? So you already know that. If not, write that down. So when price comes up here, let's sell. Um, this is not a bad area. It just, uh, price says, hey, I want higher prices. And it may go higher. And there's a thousand pip reason why, especially with all this imbalances, that was created. How, when was this created? 2015? I mean, price really coming back? Well, it came back all the way, all these imbalances here. All these imbalances were created, you know, back in, you know, 08. Right there, all those imbalances were all mitigated. So with that being said, um, we got to get ready for what we're going to do, right? And like I've already said, um, price is here now. And there's a high probability we may see higher prices. Now, if the yen gets strong, then the market can react. It would make sense for the yen drop, but I got to tell you, historically, yen's been weak, and we either need to get into a cost average up here, go into a little bit of drawdown. Not a little bit, but you know, depending on how much drawdown, you could be getting to a drawdown, or get out, cut your losses, and then play this. Play the strength, buy it. Or if you're in a drawdown, you can still play to buy too. Why not? You can you can still buy while you're in a drawdown. That's another option, right? So if price, because you know price is going to come down. We know that. We know price is going to come down. And let's take let's take this rebalance for for instance. Let's just uh, we'll take it from this swing right here. <clears throat> we know price is going to come down from this. <laughs> from this base here, excuse me. Um, price could come down here. This is 50%. Now, if price goes higher, all that does is raises our 50%. We know the balance is going to happen. It's happened here. It happened all here. The market goes up and it goes down. It goes up, it goes down. What goes up it doesn't go up forever. What goes up? Write this down. What goes up? must come down <laughs> what is that and it does that all the time that's simple basic market however you may have to hold it if you went in early but you can buy to neutralize your drawdown why not you can buy and hold it and then when it gets up here cash out we sell and let's take this right back down okay so that's an option. Personal accounts, obviously you can do it with a pop firm. It'd be challenging. You probably have to exit out of your trades. Okay. So with pound yen, I'm I hate to say this, I'm neutral because I don't know exactly what how the market is going to react, but typically it should be go bullish. Okay. With a yen expected weakness coming up. Okay. CAD yen. Let's look at CAD yen. I was just looking. Well, I can tell you this. We had this little bounce, it came down. We've been in this uptrend. We're at a key supply. Uh-oh, decision-making, decision-making, decision-making. 
let's look at this from a monthly perspective. Does it have room to go? It, it actually does. I hate to say that. It actually does. It does. It could go up another 1,200 pips. Um, I got to say, anything that comes up here, obviously, you're in a premium, right? Meaning, if you would want to sell, you want to sell when price is anywhere up here, and you would want to buy when price is low, right? With prices low, any day down here. Would you agree with that? So that means anything in here would be your sell zone. And anything down here would be your buy zone. Plain and simple, right? That'd be your buy zone. So if price comes in here, um, buy, 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 buy. Price comes up here. Uh, sell, uh, sell, sell. Are we up there again? Uh, yeah, sell. Could price go higher? Uh, yeah, but it's going to put me in a draw now. Uh, sell. Oh, okay. All right, you you you're in better position. Let's put it this way: you're in better position to sell than buy. <laughs> Down here, you're in a better position to buy than sell. Historical. I'm looking at price data on CAD JPY since 2004 on here. Okay, that, that's that's basic understanding now. Let's go back to the daily. From a price action standpoint, this is looking bearish, uh, but with the yen strength coming up, um, it could come up here. That is an imbalance. We do have an imbalance in right here as a gap. And this is the supply. Uh, yeah. I would say that is a weekly supply area. Right? So price could come up here still, uh, which is not that bad, right? This is about 306 pip. So if you have not got into a sell trade, I would not get into a sell trade as of right now. Uh, I would wait for price to come up here, right? So as of right now, I am still neutral. However, it looks to be bearish, but there is a high possibility we could come up here, rebalance. And if it does, trust me, I would want to short the damn thing. Okay? Obviously waiting for it, not just price to get up here. I would wait for confluence, wait for rejection, wait for a break of structure, you know, all of the other confluence stuff, okay? All right, so let's move on to RJPY. How's that looking? Um, RJPY is looking bullish as well. Um, there is a liquidity point up here. If you go down to the monthly, um, it's on the up end. Um, what does this mean? Uh, remember what I said about the buy and sell zone? That means anything here. And anything down here, if you ever see price come down here, you know what to do. Do you know what to do? Uh, buy. And if price comes up there, what would you do? Um, I would look to sell. I would agree with you. So if price comes out, I'll be looking to short it. I would agree with you. So as of right now, we're in that sell zone already, but price does have room to go. There is really no imbalance here. Um, everything seems to be pretty, it just got mitigated, that's mitigated. Yeah, everything looks clean, right? So it looks, prime and ready to go down but if we do get this break i will say if price comes up to this liquidity or comes here get ready to sell that damn thing okay so if this goes up this is because of yen's weakness we need to see this break come up and look to see and wait till price come up here wait till price come up here and then short it don't get into a short now we don't know what the hell yen's going to do it could short it and then boom, break it away because it's at a supply area right now. So it's at a very key point. So everything's lining up for yen 
to, to make its mark, right? Um, let's look at NCD US, NCD JPY. Everything is lining up. It's just a historical chart. What do you guys think? What do you do? Where are we at? It, it's rinse and repeat, believe me. Trust me. Right? Anything down here, what would you do? Buy. 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 Look what price went. Woo! Right? And if price comes up here, what would you do? Sell. 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 Um, what would you do? Sell. Seems simple, doesn't it? But this is something you have to be able to see over and over and over again to remind yourself and learn so that you can get your mind wrapped into this framework to be able to see it every time it does that. Okay. So do we do have some liquidity area that price could come up if, if the Japanese yen gets that weak to come up. But once it does come up here, I swear to you guys, if you guys are not pushing the sell button, please do not tell me. If you push buy button, I know a very good doctor that can help you examine it to see what's, what's, what may be going on. <laughs> All right. So on a serious note, um, guys, it, in the end, can do anything. I'm just giving you guys a my view here. Right now, we're at some very key area where price is having a hard time break, and the JPY may be the the the, the caveat break, the the make a breaker right here to break this up. And if it does, look to sell. These are very good area locations to sell. But if price breaks away, don't be surprised that price does break away because it is at a key area to where it could break. Right? There are some fair value gaps here. Um, it's in this nice zone, and I think it's been in this nice zone for a reason. It's waiting for this day, right, to determine what it's going to do. All right, so that's NCD JPY. All right, let's move on to Chef JPY. Got a few more pairs, right? A few more major pairs. Okay, this is Chef JPY. I'm in this trade. This is November 9th, 1979, all-time high, way up here. And that's nice all time high. Way up here. Right now. And I don't know about you, but what would you do? I'll draw it up for you again. What would you do? Uh, buy. You see, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm getting at? Uh, sell. Sell. Every time price come up here, boom. Every time price come up here, boom. Every time price came down here, boom. Boom. Just like that. All right, so I am bearish, but price could come up, not high, that much higher, right? But price could come up, eh, and there's anything in this zone right here, but it's not going to be that much, All right? Switch France is weak as hell right now. And it's ironic that Switch France is at the same time going to be weak with Japanese Yang. So if Japanese Yang is weak and Switch French is weak, what does that mean? Uh, may not go high as what, like the other pairs. Okay. So other than that, I am still bearish on Switch France. Okay. Even with the Japanese Yang, it comes up here. It's a nice time to go long. I mean, short it. All right. We're out of the yen. So right now, I'm, I'm neutral on the yen. Oh, uh -huh. early in the morning. And um, I get that stretch. And it looks like um, the yen may be a week uh, for majority of the pairs, euro, pound, pound, um, pound JPY, euro JPY, CAD JPY, all JPY, NCD JPY. Um, but 
your JPY and pound JPY and CAD JPY look like it has a lot more room than our JPY and NCD JPY, okay? So I would want to protect my positions. If I'm short on any one of those pairs, you would want to definitely put a buy position, pending buy, um, hedge your position so that you can take the opportunity going along. Um, obviously, you want to go at a reasonable um, lot size and then watch it and then trade it. And make some money on the on the going long um, to increase your account balance while you're in a little bit of drawdown instead of just taking a loss or you can take the loss you can go either way um, you, you, you're going to play it either way either you take the short term hit and make it back or you can hold it while you're also making money so it's personal account that sounds like a very good option um, RJPY, NCD JPY, Chef JPY they look more bearish than anything so those would be more of a weight currency. And that's my assessment on the yen. Okay, let's go through this UR real quick and then we'll go to the minor crosses. UR, um, I'm bearish. Look at that. Um, I'm expecting your strength. So if your strength comes in, this is going to pull back. Okay, I can see this coming back. And then after this is on Thursday, I can see that your strength pull back. And if it does, it could do, it could do this. And then fall down, okay? And the reason why I say that is because of this. You see this? This is equilibrium. This is the equilibrium from this swing low to that swing high. This is that swing low. This is that swing high. This is equilibrium. <clears throat> and guess what? After we hit that high, we have not hit it yet. <clears throat> so that's still due. Okay. That's still due to come. So I am looking for a little bit of pullback. It may even come a little bit lower. It, it may play, it may play lower all the way to Thursday, way here. I'd be surprised if it plays even lower. If it comes all the way to equilibrium then you can forget about that by Thursday. You can just play this like this, okay? But in the meantime, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this pullback into its equilibrium. So it all depends on where price is at by Thursday. So other than that, I'm bearish on your odd right now, pound odd. Pound odd, looking at the weekly. Nice key supply area. Price came way up here, came way up here. And I would say I'm bearish all the way to here, right? And I like to see pound odd. Hold this level right here, and then possibly go back up. But everything is pointing to lower price action. Okay, so I'm banking on odd to come back and clean up all of these imbalances here. Let's go down to the daily. So if you were to take price from here to here. We came back and got that equilibrium already right there, right? So I'm going to take that out and let's look at price action from this swing high, this swing low versus this one and this one because we've already reached that equilibrium. Tapped it, went into the discount and then shot up, okay? Now that we shot up, this is the new high up here versus um, versus that one. So we're not gonna play off of that one. So if we go swing low and swing high, this is our equilibrium right here. So I'm looking for price to come down to mitigate that equilibrium before we go higher. Right now we got a real good high. We broke the change of character right here, it's confirmed, it's lower, 
and it's coming down. This was TP number one, that's TP number two. We'll come here. I'm looking to buy. Okay, as of right now, I'm looking for pound weakness or odd strength to continue pushing down and we are bearish, right? We are now creating lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, okay? So that's pound odd. Pound, uh, okay, you're a cat. You're a cat, we had this little breakdown and we had this swing up, right? So if you look at this swing right here, look at this. If you look at this swing high, and this swing low of the market structure on a daily time frame. Let's grab it from this high all the way down. And you see where price action equilibrium is at. Right here, 50%. Hit that. Did price come up and hit that? It should there. All right here. So it puts us back in where? Into the premium. And we should be looking to do what once we're in the premium? Short sell, right? We short premium and we buy discount. So we're in here. So let's go back here and let's look at that fractal. So now we're looking at a different swing, right? So we've already reached 50%. So that move is, this move is now done. So now we're looking at a different swing. So now we're looking at this swing low and this swing high that's at a very key Supply area. We didn't go this high. We went this high. Well, why this swing? What makes it valid swing? Well, we have to have a change of character make to make it a valid swing. Oh, I was wondering why. How, how would you call that a swing? Where it had to break structure. It has to break structure for it to be a valid turn. A swing is a reversal. Okay, I got it. Has anyone made that point? Is that clear for anyone? Anyone make that note now? Um, hello? All right, so let's get the equilibrium on this one. Here it is, equilibrium 50%. We're in the, disc, we're in the premium, change of character, where we're going. Lower, I got to pull back here because it's, it could pull back to the supply. But it could keep going down. It already had to pull back up here. But there's a little supply area that I could see uh, pound CAD, uh, Euro CAD with a Euro strength push this up a little bit. Um, if we get a Euro strength, I'm not sure how the news is going to react to the Euro interest rate, but we could get a, a Euro strength and then push down. Okay. So I'm bearish on Euro CAD, pound CAD. We just had to swing high. We had to swing low. Did we reach 50% on that one? Yep, we sure did. All right, this trade is done. So now we're looking at the next swing. Where's the next swing? The next swing is that swing low. Just a high? Nope, we got another high. Okay, so then we can raise that one. So we got the swing high here. Did we get a change of character? Yes, we did. Okay, so this is be the swing high. So let's take the equilibrium from this one and this one. I don't I'm not gonna take this wick, I'm gonna take this candlestick right there instead. Get that is an anomaly long wick market flash crash on pound. And our equilibrium is right here. That's the 50%. So we're looking for price to come down at least to that equilibrium. In fact, I wouldn't look to buy. I'm not buying here. I'm looking for sell. So every time price pop, I would sell it. Every time price pop, I would sell. Sell, sell. Every time it pops up, I'm selling. Every time it pops up, I'm selling. 
You get it? I'm selling until what? Until I get my equilibrium. It's plain and simple. I, I feel I'm in better position to sell pop when it's in the premium. Okay? So I am in a downtrend right here to short it. So let's zoom in on this pound CAD. Just the charts, and you can see where we were close to to the supply. It didn't come that close enough, and it and it really changed character right here. And we had this bear flag. You see that bear flag? Price come up, boom, 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 and it broke out. That's what the bear flag looked like. And it's going to get a breakout, All right? And we got that breakout right here. Boom. That's a breakout, the bell flag breakout. And it came back, it retests off this um, demand zone. And it came back, it retests on the opposite end of that. And now it's looking like it's going to come down. All right. So I am still bearish on pound cat. Even though pound cat pulled up on me, that's right. I'm looking to come down. So pound cat had a little bit of strength yet last week due to its GDP and, and employment, but I'm not sure this is enough to hold it down. It came back to this supply area right here. We test it and it's looking best. Okay, so pound CAD, if it's, if it's continued for pound weakness and CAD continues its strength over pound, I'm looking for lower prices on pound CAD down to this equilibrium. And it's ironic that the equilibrium happened to be at a very key order block. At a 71%. You see this? Look at this. 71%. You see that? 71% order block value. Look at this 50%. Look at this 49%. Look at 50%. Which one is bigger? Um, duh. I know that's a rhetorical question, but I also want you to look at something else. I want you to look to the left over here and see why this order block makes sense. Yeah, that is called an imbalance. Right, and we have another one right there. So price is, is again, fair value gaps. These are imbalances and fair value gaps. It's like a magnet for price to come down to mitigate. This is a magnet over here. Price to come down and mitigate. <laughs> it's like my animation noise, All right? It's very clear, guys. I just wanted to make sure you guys are understanding that pound cat. All right, let's look at your NCD. What are we doing? Let me look on the weekly charts. All right, pound NCD is at a very high, and it came back, and it broke structure. Right there, it broke that structure right here. That was the low that was created before it was shot up. And it came back up. And it looked like it's trying to hold below that change of character here. So we did get a break of structure. And right now, it's looking to be a change of character on that right now as it stands, right? So we're looking to see more um, change of character below. Now, it could range a little bit before we drop, but I am bearish on your NCD. Pound NCD. Let's just look at the weekly. We haven't been higher than this since 2016. Very key point, 2016. So that's, a, that's how long we've been um, in that range, right? So for the last seven years, we've been in this range here. And every time prices came up, we have has dropped. It dropped here, it dropped here, and every time it popped, it dropped. You guys see it? Right there, right there, 
right there. Ooh, definitely right there. So are we there yet? Is that a pop? Uh, that looked like a valid pop to me. All right, then I'm gonna short it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is did it multiple times throughout the year for the last seven years. Let's go to the daily. Let me zoom in for you real quick. And do we have that confirmation? Well, on a higher time frame, this is that low right there. And we are almost there. So on a daily time frame, it's going towards that break. And that's a good thing right there, right? We're looking for that break, but we haven't had a clear break of structure yet. So if you wanted to short it, I got to tell you, it looks really good. Why? Because that's a high. And we did not create a higher high. Therefore, this is a lower high. And we did create, you know, a low, lower low. So we're waiting for this. And it's going to be a nice drop. Once this come back, if it doesn't and it comes back up, then it's still in an area of supply. This is the premium area to this zone, right? So that means anytime you see price, and this is quite simple, right? Anytime you see price get in this area, you want to do what? Anytime you see price get into this area, you would want to do what? Uh, buy, 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 buy. Because price kept going up each time it hit that zone. And each time it comes up here, you want to sell, 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 sell. Um, yeah. You guys are seeing this? I think this is pretty quite clear. Simple price action, right? So going back to the daily, yeah, I think if you were to sell, even though you didn't get a confirmation of a break of structure yet, um, on a lower time frame, it looks bearish as freaking hell. Okay. So we are looking for, um, let's see, right there. This is a nice, it's kind of hard to determine on a four hour time frame what it will. So if we had this, had this massive NCD strength and then it came back and created a lower high, higher low, I mean, higher highs, higher low, and it just went up and it created a little bit of a, a higher low right here. So that's why I like that because it's creating a lower high, a lower, I mean, a lower low, lower high, and then I'm looking for another lower low, okay? So I kind of like this downtrend look, and this would be a break of structure there and it looking like it's staying below on a four hour time frame. This is pretty strong. This is a pretty good evidence that you drop down. We'll be doing it doesn't make this clear on the daily time frame. This is still early. This is still a great opportunity to get into a short. Um, if I were you, I'm bearish. Okay. All right. Moving on to other pairs real quick. Um, minor crosses, cat switch French. Daily. That's which friend, Leonard, what are you are you? I'm buying. Which French is weak? Look at the weekly historical. Um, what would you do? Let, let me paint this for you. Uh yeah, bye. I'm long, bullish. Okay. Going back to the daily time frame. That's which friends long. You're a pound. Bears. Market's dropping. I think we're going to get down here. 
And then I think Euro Pound's going to pull back up because of Euro Strength. I think we're going to come back here about Thursday and then Euro Strength. We got some fair value gaps here. I think we're going to come down. So Euro Pound, um, I'm still bearish right, until we get down here. This is where we look to buy. If you look at the premium and discount, guess what? We're just crossing over that 50%, right? So we'll get into the premium um, discount zone. The euro pound, I'm still bearish. Um, pound switch French, look at this. Pound switch French. You like this little contraction triangle? Guess what? Did we get a breakout? I think so. All right, so I'd be bullish on pound switch French. Switch French is going to be weak. Odd CAD. Odd CAD um, is looking bearish right here. And based on this swing low to swing high, we did get into an equilibrium of being bullish. So with odd CAD, this is going to range a little bit because this is another range in pairs, but I would be um, bullish as we broke character here. As long as we stay above that, I would say we're going down up to this, at least this supply area right here. It's odd CAD, um, NCD CAD. Um, we're at below equilibrium. Yep, we are. We're in a discount. So I would be looking to buy. If long as we stay above that, I would be saying with the NCD cat would be bullish. I switch French. Oh yeah. This is automatic buy. Switch French weak. Look, yep, I'm here. This is a better trade setup than odd cat and NCD cat NCD cat. If you had a, a pick between odd chef and NCD chef or odd cat and NCD cat. Odd Chef and NCD Chef are by far better set up. So this is a long, and look at NCD Chef. Um, long. <laughs> Come on, guys, look at look at the weekly. Look, this is 2009. This is priced all the way back to 2004. Okay, look at this. You should be buying. Every time it came down here, buy, 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 buy. Buy, right? Same thing with the um, odd chef. Look at that. Every time it pops up here, every time it drops, every time it dip, I, I would have bought. Buy the dip. Okay? Every time it dip, I would have been buying. So you short the pop and you buy the, you buy the drop. That's how you can remember it. Short the pop. Every time it pops, short it, and you buy the drop. Okay. Odd in city. Um, where are we at with odd in city? I'm looking for odd in city to get in back into this range. So I would be, would be, I'd be more embarrassed. I don't trade this pair as often as I like. Unless there's an extreme like this. Um, right now, it's not, it's not an extreme, right? We're here. We came back down. We came back up. We came back down. So I think we're going to be in a little bit of rain before we break. But I would be looking to short this. Unless it comes up here, then I would be, I'd be interested in shorting it, right? Because right now, if you look at it from this swing low, this swing high, it's not clear. Would you agree? We're right here in the equilibrium. You see just 50% right here? So I'm not clearly in the discount. And if I was, you know what to do. You will buy. And I'm not clearly in the premium either. And you know what to do. You would sell if price comes up. That's why I'm waiting for price to come up here. So right now, I'm neutral on odd NCD. Um, I'm suspecting that it could come back and mitigate these for value gap before it comes out. But there is a key supply area and a key demand area that I would say I would need to wait to see um, which area it would go. 
Okay. And that's how I would go with our density right now. I would not trade it. It's not setting up for me yet. Your switch friends, come on, switch friends this week. Expected your strength. Look at this. Look at this. What would you do down here? Uh, buy. That's right. So if you got that, then you're on the right path. Is that a key demand area, which I like? Um, so it's bouncing off of here really good. And I like to see the break of that structure. If you wanted to wait, that would be a good thing to do. You can see the break of that structure. And it looks like it wants to do that. So I think you're, it's going to do that for you. Okay. Other than that, um, I think we are done. Okay. So that will complete this week's uh, top-down analysis. And I will end this recording and this will get posted up so this would be a good week it's a lot of things going on a lot of setup so i hope you got to learn out of this very 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 long <laughs> seems like a very long top-down analysis and that is your weekly top-down analysis for the week of june 11th